In today's video, we're going to look at some silver Roosevelt dimes that are worth money, what you should look for on these coins that can give them value and different coin prices for these coins and, you know, different conditions. And don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what kind of coin we should give away or, you know, a coin mat, coin microscope, things from couchcollectibles.com. We can give those away. Let me know in the comments below. All right, so first off, we're gonna start with the 1953 Silver Roosevelt Dime. Now, as you guys know, before 1964, all these coins are 90% silver for these Roosevelt Dimes. Now, we have a no mint mark, a D mint mark, and an S mint mark. As we see, those mint marks are going to be on the reverse of the coin at the bottom to the left of the torch there. And for the no mint mark, they produced over 53 million. The D mint mark, they produced a whopping 130. 36 million and for the S mint mark only around 39 million so very high mintages they produced a lot of these coins so they're not really valuable in terms of how many they actually made so here's an example of a 1953 did I say 43 last time 53 1953 Roosevelt dime is what we're looking at um, this is the D mint mark now this coin is graded at a mint state grade, graded at a mint state 64, but the coin only sold for around $9 because they produced a lot of these, a lot of these at this grade most likely. But if we look at a 1953D that's graded at a mint state 68, it's got the full torch. This coin sold for over $1,400. Graded by NGC, this coin, like I said, $1,000. $400. Coin is in absolutely, uh, you know, excellent condition. We see that D mint mark there on the reverse. Now on the D mint mark, you also want to look for a D over a horizontal D. So we got this D over a horizontal D that's underneath it, which you can see here in the image displayed. You know, I have USB coin microscopes on couchcollectibles.com. If you want to see your coins and your mint marks up close like this, um, you know, I am personally not a big fan of the coin loop, but it's uh, too much stress on my eyes. That's why I use this bad boy, the USB coin microscope. So if you guys want to get one, get one on couchcollectibles.com. Link is always in the description of every single video. If you don't want to get one, no big deal. You're not hurting my feelings, but let's move on to the 1953 No Mint Mark. Now this is a little blurry, but this coin is graded at a mint state 64. The coin sold for around $10. And again, if we go to the high graded version of this coin, 1953 high grade graded at a mint state 67 by NGC, this coin sold for over $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. Now here is a 1953 proof coin. So there's a big difference between proof coin and business strike coins. I've done a whole video on that. So be sure to type in, you know, proof coins, couch collectibles on YouTube and you'll find those videos. This coin sold for over $2,000 and that's because the coin is graded at a proof 68. Coin grading scale only goes up to 70. This is nearly a perfect grade of proof 68. And like I said, $2,000 for that dime. Now for the 1953S, we also want to look for a repunched mint mark here. So this is a repunched mint mark example of that. Pretty, you know, clear and obvious there. You see the S going outside of the S uh, underneath it. So this is an example of that 1953S repunched mint mark. Only sold for around $18. So nothing super valuable. Same thing with the 1953S graded at a mint state 63. No errors on it. Only sold for a little, you know, five to ten bucks for that coin. But the 1953S with the full bands, the high grade of a mint state 68, this coin sold for over $4,000. And boy, does it have some amazing toning to it as well. If you guys are not familiar with full bands, Here's an example of the full bands taking place on the Roosevelt dime or full torch. So when these coins are being graded, the grading company, you know, will put that on the coin slab if your coin has full bands, which will increase the value of the coin. So here's some other silver dimes that are worth money. Let's start with a 1960 Denver minted dime. So here on the reverse, if you look at the bottom of the torch, you may see a D mint mark. If you do, you want to look for this, a re-punched mint mark. Now you can see your coins up close like this with a USB coin microscope, which I have available on couchcollectibles.com. Now here is that coin that actually has that RPM, that re-punched mint mark. 
So that will give the coin some value. Of course, these coins are also 90% silver for the 1960, and this coin does have a high grade of a Mint State 66. Now, this dime here sold for over $360. Now, if you have a 1960 proof dime, definitely look for this. You can really see it on the I and the N, the doubling. This is a double die obverse taking place, uh, doubling taking place on the front of the coin. So we can see that here on the date 1960 itself, as well as on the designer's initials, a JS there. So very, very noticeable doubling taking place on the 1960 proof coin. Here's some more examples of that. The word Liberty should always be on the lookout for that. Very, very noticeable doubling on those coins. So here is actually the 1960 proof dime that actually has that double die obverse. So here in the coin slab, you can see it says DDO. That's the double die obverse doubling on the front of the coin. And then it's graded by PCGS at a proof 68 deep cameo. So it is a very high graded coin, which will also give the coin a lot of its value. Now this dime here sold for over $900. It's actually almost a thousand dollar dime sold for over $990. So very expensive dime. Moving on to a 1963. Now we looked at the front of the coin. Now here's actually the business strike. So regular dimes that um, that is not the proof dime. So this is a 1963 D. Look for doubling on the flames of the torch as well as on the lettering. You can see there on America that being doubled. Uh, so always be on the lookout for those. Now, this coin here, it's got some amazing toning to it, but it also does have that double die reverse as well. And it's got a high grade of a Mint State 66, which will also give it value. Now, this coin here sold for over $325. Also, don't forget to look for an RPM on the 1963 Denver Minted Dime. So here's an example of that. Always be on the lookout for those. If we move on to the 1963 no mint mark, look for doubling on the front of the coin, on the lettering as well as on the date, the initials, look for the doubling there on the front of the coin. You can see their trust and the date 1963. Here is that coin that has that doubling on the front of the coin and this coin here sold for over $40. So nothing too valuable on that coin. But hey, you never know, um, always, always be on the lookout for that doubling. Now here is a 1964 dime. Now this does look like it's damaged. It looks like someone intentionally did this to the coin. However, it was struck on a defective planchet, which we can see in the image displayed. And that is actually a mint error. So that will give the coin some value. Again, this 1964 is 90% silver, and this coin sold for over 300 US dollars. Now here's a 1964. Now for, actually let's back up to this picture. So for the 1963, look for doubling here on the reverse. And also here's an example of that as well. Now here's an example of 1964 double die reverse. So always be on the lookout for doubling on those coins because it can give your coins a little bit of value. In some cases, a lot of value. Now, this coin here is a 1965 dime. Now, what's unique about this dime is that it was not supposed to be silver. That was the year that they started producing non-silver dimes. However, in this case, this 1965 dime was actually struck on an old silver planchet that the 1964s were struck on and prior. So that is going to give the coin a lot of value. A very, very expensive dime here. This 1965 dime sold for over $8,000. $8,000 dime. On your 1968 Roosevelt dimes, you wanna look for doubling on the front of the coin. So look for that on the lettering as well as on the date itself, 1968. Now here is a 1968 now these again are not silver so these are regular 1968s that you can find in your pocket change you can look for double die obverses now looking at dimes really does uh man it really does get to you after a while it really hurts your eyes just because you're dealing with such a small coin uh, even under the even under the microscope you know you get tired of those little small coins i like looking for half dollar errors 
Now, this coin here sold for over $75, so nothing too valuable, but uh, definitely an awesome coin. Now, I've talked about this in a lot of other videos. This is a 1968 proof Roosevelt dime that is supposed to have an S mint mark. So these proof coins were supposed to have an S mint mark. This is actually missing the S mint mark. As you can see above the date, it has no mint mark. So that will give the coin a lot, I mean a lot of value. This coin would uh, probably uh, change your life because the coin sold for over $48,000. That is a lot of money. Could you imagine? What would you do with forty-eight thousand dollars if you could? If you found a coin and you could sell it for that much money, what would you do with the forty-eight thousand dollars? I know I would probably um, pay off student loan debt and uh, use it to uh, put on a down payment for a house or something, or invest it in something, make it uh, worthwhile. You know. Now let's move on to a nineteen sixty-nine Denver minted. Roosevelt dime. Now here's an example of an RPM. So this one is really difficult to see. We'll zoom in here. Now as you see the D mint mark, if you look to the top right above it, so right above it to the right a little bit, now you can see the outline of another D mint mark. So that is very, very cool. So that is definitely an RPM, a repunched mint mark that you should be looking for. Here is that 1969D with that repunched mint mark, and this coin does have a high grade of a mint state 66. This Roosevelt dime sold for over 100 US dollars. You know, it's not a $48,000 coin, but hey, it's a $100 dime. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Check out the videos to the left of me, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles, and this is where I disappear.